Hey Rita, we're back here again. So uh, what, what, what do you got on tap for us today? Well, what we'd like to do is um, take a look at Ryan's hydration status. As we know, hydration is one of the most crucial components of your training, as well as racing. So we have a little meter here called a urine-specific gravity meter. Okay. We need to have you make a donation for us. Come gotta on pee in the cup, Ryan. We'll, we'll take a look. All right, okay. cool. All right, Rita, so Ryan's going off and he's, he's getting his urine sample in the cup, so what are we going to look for from this? Basically, what we look for is the meter will give us a, a range of values as to what is normal, what is not. So we want to find out what his value is for his urine. So actually uh, testing like the weight of his urine is going to give us an idea of, of how well hydrated or dehydrated he is. Definitely. Um, you know, sometimes people can also will also look at the color of their urine. All right, well, Ryan, Ryan's looking, wow, Ryan's nice looking and bright. pretty bright yellow. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so. you know, if I just looked at this, you know, this morning I woke up, took my B vitamins, took some other supplements, and, you know, oftentimes that will change the color of my urine. So if I were to just look at this, just I would think, oh, I'm really dehydrated, but, you know, I may or may not be dehydrated. So I think that's one of the great things about this test that we can do. Right, right so we'll, we'll, we'll find going. out. Stand clear. All right, so this is not a... Not a normal thing people usually do, right? Right. I mean, this is maybe taking it a little extreme for the average person. Like I said, a lot of people will tend to look at the color of their urine, and, and that will give them an idea of their hydration status. Um, urine this bright could be an indicator of dehydration, as you just said. Oftentimes, you just want to have a little tinge of yellow in the urine right. to say whether you're hydrated or not. Okay. Um, for people who are on supplements or taking vitamins regularly, it might be a value to say, I'm going to follow the same hydration protocol over the course of four days without taking my supplements, without, you know, taking my vitamins. See how you do as far as that hydration, you know, visually or having it measured. Then start in on your supplements and your vitamins, maintaining that same hydration protocol and seeing you know, what are, the, what are the changes? Yeah, I mean, I know one of these things when we didn't have a urine-specific gravity measure, we actually just used to kind of like weigh Ryan before he ran, you know, take his shoes off and everything, get a, get a body weight, and then he'd run, and then we'd kind of like weigh him again, right. and then maybe add in, you know, how much water he drank in along the way. Because typically, basically, if you're drinking in 16 ounces of water, that's going to be a pound of body weight. So we used to do, you know, we'd weigh him in, and maybe he weighs in at 138, and then he finishes the run and we towel him off and weigh him in again and maybe he's weighing 135. So we're gonna be like, all right, well he lost three pounds of fluid because he didn't lose fat that fast. Right, of course you know? not. So that used to be what we, we, what we do and we'll still do sometimes when we don't have access to this. But I think that's kind of a great tool that anybody can use. Absolutely, body weight, changes in body weight. All right, so what do we got on today? So a normal, considered normal range is anywhere from 1.0 up to 1.060. Uh -huh. And Ryan measured out at 1.013. Nice. So, doing fine there. So, hydration level is pretty good? Absolutely. So, with a refractometer, that's the technical name of the meter, um, get a good idea of what that hydration level is looking like. Good, yeah, and I know we've kind of started to use these in training because when the Beijing Olympics came around, we knew he was going to be running a really hot and humid marathon. Right and hydration loss was going to be a much bigger issue than those marathons he's ran that are typically fall and spring marathons that aren't very hot, you know, we've had to deal with the water loss less. Absolutely, yeah, those environmental conditions really make a big difference. Yeah, and I know our typical strategy is every 15 to 20 minutes in, in, the, in the hard training, we're giving him, you know, a bottle and anywhere from four to eight ounces, depending on the time of year, he's going to get those fluids in. Yeah, yeah I know, like, one of the easy things for me to do as an athlete that I've picked up over the years is right away when I get up in the morning, I'm always really dehydrated. It's been a long night, haven't been drinking anything, is to you know put down 20 ounces of water, just first thing that goes into my system. That, that has helped my hydration out a lot. Yeah, because I know definitely it's one of those, you know, the old adage I learned as, as, a, as an early coach was, you know, if you wait to hydrate until you're thirsty, it's too late. You know, and you know, because you're always just waiting on the back end and you're already dehydrated, and so you're losing power and you're just trying to play catch up. So I know this has become a much more proactive hydration strategy with us, and, and Ryan craves those water bottles out on, out on the roads. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thanks so much, Rita. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Sure.